Conan, did you watch Dynamite? Oh, by the way, did we get the number yet? Um, let me check. I, I seen imagine it. probably around the same. No, it was less. Been. It was less than last week. Yeah, but around the same. Not, not was it? I, I imagine it probably wasn't significantly less. Like I imagine maybe, maybe a little bit less, but not not significantly. It was like nine hundred thousand, and uh, I think they made a million. Yeah, oh wait, they, they lost a hundred thousand. Yeah, they did nine hundred one. Nine hundred. Oh my god, a per, per, perfect example. Let me tell you, I, I was going to tweet this right, but on the Wrestling Observer Live post that they do a, like on the uh, Alvarez and the other guy, they they do a um when the show's over, they do a live stream review. Do you know what the title of the live stream review was? No. AW had a lot of good wrestling. Right. Okay. Whenever they say that, and it's like, okay, the only thing that like really happened on the show was like the matches were good. The show doesn't usually do well because yeah, like, there's no angle. Right, right. Yeah. And it's like, you can, bro, I've said that about these guys all the time. I said, when they like the show, it's usually does underwhelms in the ratings because they like the wrestling. And it's like, you know, I, I don't know. Um, but, but what AW, uh, you know, WWE was coming off a great weekend of television with the Rumble and the Sami Zayn, you know, all of their right. packages and everything. Smackdown great week, too, because Raw, SmackDown was Raw good and Raw was week. decent. Bro, AEW, they had a major production glitch on this show. We're going to go over it. Did you notice it, by the way? The microphone? No, the, the, no, 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 not the microphone. There was a, a huge production error. All right. On this, so we'll get to it. Right I'm surprised you guys didn't notice it. because yeah, you're talking about Moxley, right? No. No, oh, that's okay. one of them. But like, yeah. Okay, so so starts with Moxley and Page. <clears throat> Typical Moxley match and with Page. Uh, they did the the Japanese forearm spot like multiple times during this, which you know whatever. But it's hard hitting, bro. AEW does this every single like literally ninety nine percent of the time. Like every time there's there's blood in the match, they take they show the camera shot at the exact moment that the guy's gigging himself. Did you see when when Moxley was in the corner? So he did gig he himself. He sit in the corner. He reaches in his mouth. Bro, they had the shot on him the entire time. Pulls out his mouth, scrapes his head, puts it back in his mouth. Then you show the cam, the camera's right there. Like, like they're on him, and the, the director is like, nobody said, go, go, go to this shot. They literally showed him gigging himself, and they show it every time these guys work. Well, I missed yeah. that because I was multitasking, but I, I was. Joe, Joe, go yeah. to AEW Botches. Yeah. Or find, there, there's. Um, I'll find it. Just, just find it. It'll they, show you. It's clear as day. It's ridiculous. But, uh. But this was a hard-hitting clothesline. You know what it was? <clears throat> it was like an old, like all Japan style match with kind of like the new school thing. But the guys aren't the guys don't know how to strike like like those guys did back in the day, you know. But uh, but the clotheslines are stiff and everything. This is you know whatever. But uh, Moxley, this is a very weird. Um, so Moxley wins, and this is very weird. I I don't know who like. Are the Blackpool Combat Club baby faces? Is Paige a baby face? Who's the heel? Because after the match, Paige stood with his foot over the robot over Moxley. Okay, because he gave, he rolled him up and beat him, right? And he was still down the mat selling, and Moxley's like was selling from underneath this match. So Claudio and Wheeler come in the ring, and here's Paige. is one on three with these guys. <laughs> Paige shoves Claudio. The Moxley gets his feet, tries to go after Paige, but Claudio holds him back. And then Moxley flipped off Paige and then laid down flat on his back and, and cast. And Claudio told Paige to leave the ring, and he just left the ring. And this is a very weird post match. What 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 did you think about this match? And what did you think of the post match? Uh, the first thing I was thinking of is like, why did his dad come down with him if he wasn't involved in anything? Right. Yeah. Just um, came out. Like, what purpose did that serve other than, hey, want to go with me to the ring? Is everybody gonna? You know, like I saw after Jade wrestled, she carried her kid to the back. What's going on here? Yeah. Um, anyway. What about the pose? Go ahead. Uh, okay. So let me just say something about the bleeding. So now you verified what I didn't know because I thought, because if you remember, he was bleeding above the eye and most people don't, usually you cut yourself on the top of the head. So right. I was like, was that hard way? Or did he gig himself over the eye, which is actually kind of clever because we always do it from the top of the head. But I, I, uh, but I also thought if he did gig, I was like, dude, you do it every match, so it doesn't mean anything. It's right. gratuitous. You're supposed to save that for when you're in a feud at the end of the feud, even though he was in a feud here, but he does it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it wasn't like a real big thing. If we hadn't seen him do it before, I think it would have it would have been more effective. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I thought the match was really good, really physical. Bro, he hit him with every sort of thing, including like two variants of a pile driver. I think he even hit him with the buckshot, right? 
Yeah, and he kicked out of everything. There, there was yeah. a million false finishes. Yeah, I thought at the end he should have sold a little bit more because at the end he was on the top rope, you know, making signs and you know cheering with the people. And I thought he should have sold them. Should and and you 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 asked who was the heel? The heel was Paige because they were booing him. Right. You know, um, which is why the post match was a weird visual. Yeah, but I like at the yeah. end when he was like doing push like push ups, like I'm still in shape. Let's mm-hmm. go. Um, and he was flipping them off, and he was flipping them off. I like that they left with good animosity, like this ain't over, you know? I, I agree, but bro, let me tell you something. It's like, you know, they're only doing like 900,000 people, right? right? And the WWE is doing like two over 2 million now on both shows, right? And they don't do the blood. They don't do the cussing. They don't do the, the middle fingers or anything. Bro, they, just, they, they come across when the show is like, you know, not doing like near as good as the other product. This kind of looks like kind of cheap cheap like to, you know like cheap heat like like spots stuff that they're doing you know like the blood and everything and, and and it's not when you're not getting the numbers it's like dude you're kind of you're wasting all this because too many people are doing it on the show like how many guys should, should give the middle finger on the show you know there's a bunch of matches that had the middle finger right but um uh, joe i sent you a oh you gotta hear i have it yeah yeah you ready Tony, this, so this is well, watch this it's hysterical we this, this, this wait, is wait, the wait. camera shot now imagine you're in the truck okay that they're supposed to be professional directing team here. I know they have some good guys that work there. Like, you know, like people that used to work in WCW work there. Right. Yeah. And so, impact. So, yeah. And impact. So, so, so play this. <laughs> Bro, why anyway? Okay. Besides they, the they, fact they, they do it all the time. They show but the fact that, that, okay. But the fact <laughs> right. that they caught him doing it, that's bad enough. But the fact that he would do it in plain sight. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask. <laughs> Like, why wouldn't he be ducked down? Or it's whatever, like, dude, you, know? you want that. But, bro, that's, let me tell you something. That's bad work. Yeah. Because you're trying to sell this bloody battle and everything. And in the middle of it, you could just, like, you just right in front of everybody. Just, just, just Right. Like, I saw this yourself. old clip. I saw this old clip in Japan. Uh huh. But this is back in the day when nobody knew what blading was, right? right. They didn't and know he, how, how it did it. They right. thought it was real. Yeah. And so the Sheik, I think, was hitting him with a pencil, right? And mm-hmm. you could see him just going like that real quick, but real yeah. quick. Like but you didn't know well, Abdullah. Okay. Abdullah. Yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah. Abdullah would have the razors on his like out sticking out of like his fingertips yeah. on the tape, so he would just li- like literally like just be slicing himself. You know, <laughs> so it's like, I mean, oh my god. Yeah, back right. in the day where there were no smart fans, so nobody knew what to look for. Right. Okay. So the next was uh, um, so they had the acclaimed come out. Uh, oh, actually, no, no, no. Hang on. Okay, so this is weird. So we a uh, great, great character development here. Backstage, Renee Paquette interviewed Jamie Hader and the Bunny, who was accompanied by the Butcher and the Blade. The Bunny challenged Hader to eliminate her match next week. Hader accepted the challenge. Then Paquette said something was happening and asked for free to be shown on the video screen behind them. And footage showed Soraya and Tony Storm attacking Britt Baker and like yelling in the screen. like. And so uh, what's her name? Uh, Hader ran, ran away to like go help. And they abruptly, like, like they do all the time, they abruptly just cut the segment and the announcers didn't even really talk about it, and they just went right to the next ring entrance. And that's the, what they so like this thing didn't resonate at all. And like you know, I, I don't know. What would you? What'd you yeah, and tell them what and tell them what show they're going to fight on. Rampage. Right. <laughs> it's like they get, she literally just challenged her to match a rampage. No, right. not, that was the gist of the convo. Right. Fifteen they seconds. They showed the fight for, for right. about five seconds. Showed Soraya yelling in the screen, and then they just abruptly cut away to to, to this ring entrance. And yeah. it was like, all right. They do that a lot. It's kind of weird. So they spent ten seconds or fifteen seconds, let's yeah. say twenty, to be to be you know gracious, setting up a match for Rampage. Right. So how are we supposed to give a f- right? So next right. is uh, the and acclaimed- it's a cold match out of nowhere for no reason. The the acclaimed wrestled two local wrestlers that didn't give their names, and uh, the two local wrestlers looked like nineteen eighty. Like like a 1985 yeah. tag team that would wrestle the Midnight Express or something, right. right? But but the guys, bro, when you put jobbers on and they're green, and so they did a spot. I guess like the the Bowen super kicked the one guy, and he literally when, when you're trying to take the bump over the top rope, he he goofed it, like he hit the rope wrong, and then he stopped and he jumped over the top rope. Uh, it was terrible. And I was like, oh, my God. And that's what happens when you put that's how you. That's how they started the match, yeah. That's how they started the match yeah. with, the, with, the, with, the, with the botch. Right. Okay. So the match was only 55 seconds, which is perfect. Yeah. So these guys should just Poor, kill but you, guys. But yeah. I felt bad for the guy because I was thinking, here this guy's getting a tryout and he picked up the first move. Mm. So he's going to go over to try to make the guy look good, you know? Right. All right. Yeah. So then 
Uh, so Austin Gunn and Colton can come out, and you know, bro, these, these I, they just have they have, they have good charisma. When they come out, you just like like okay, this like when when they come out, fans don't like them, which is good. And and it's kind of like okay, business is picking up because like they they they, they bring it every week. They're, they're, yeah. they're good 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 character. I like these guys. Yeah, they, they have they, the, the X factor. X factor, and they look good. And they're good looking kids and they, they have good bodies and everything, you know? So they and they got their shirts on. Bro, they remind me like the uh you know, the natural born thrillers. Right. They'd always walk around with their shirts off, right. but they but they look good, right? Right. So the guns were called saying in last week's therapy session, the AW tag team titles would make them happy, and the guns asked for a title match. Bowen's called the Rod and Todd Flanders, and Cass asked the fans that the guns deserved a title shot, and the fans were against it. And they claimed and guns started pushing and shoving. Then Billy got between them and said he was sick of it, and he left the ring. Then Austin and Colton took issue with BB Billy leaving, and one of them said Billy should do what he used to do by drowning himself in a pill bottle. Then Billy got mad and turned to the ring on his kid's face and asked if they think they have what he does. And Billy said we'd see next week because they were getting a tag team title shot. And the broadcast team pointed out the Caster and Bowen seemed perplexed by Billy making the match, and they did. Because like they asked the crowd should they get a title match, and the crowd said no. And then Billy left and came back and said, "Okay, you guys got your match." And they were like, well, "Wait a second, <laughs> why are we wrestling these guys again?" You know, so that, that was I don't know what they're going to do, but yeah, that, that whole feud was, from weird, Billy weird. siding with two guys instead of his sons and trying to fit in with them as you know the uncle at the party, and he is over with the fans, but he had he had a pink shirt and pink sneakers on, like right. he's all in on this, and uh, and from the psychiatrist thing where I thought the heels got over more than the baby faces. There's so many things that, you know, like I'm not feeling this feud. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, well, I am kind of, uh, you know, I'm feeling that these guys are in a goofy feud. You know what I'm saying? Like like the dad being in this and he's a thing is, is making this just, just, just you know, like th- these guys could do a feud with these guys. And if it was just the four of them. But, but the dad being involved makes it a very weird feud. You know what I'm saying? So that, right. that do you get that same feeling? Well, that's what I just said, and yeah. actually siding with other guys instead of his sons. Yeah. So next, Jungle Boy was interviewed in the back by Alex Marvez, who asked what's next for Perry and Hook as a tag team. And Perry said he had a wonderful time team with Hook, but he's done, and he's this this year is about all, him being on his own. So, what'd you take of that? <laughs> uh, bro, like I said, they just waste every backstage segment they do is, a, is just a colossal waste of time. They get nothing out of it. Uh, Takshita versus uh, Brian Cage with Prince Nana. What do you think of Prince Nana, by the way? He does. He adds absolutely nothing. So this wait, match, wait, wait, we go back to the last. Uh, it's like you know, promo. you know, like when they put parsley on your food, uh-huh. it adds nothing in no <laughs> way, shape, or form. You can't eat it. Doesn't really have any smell to it. It's like, what is it there for? Like a garnish, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like a garnish. So I would tell everybody this: watch Takshita and Brian Cage, okay? And mm-hmm. you know, Takshita is a Japanese wrestler, decent size guy. Cage obviously is, you know, a deal. I would like to tell you, Lord Cyrus, who I spoke to the other day, put him over as being uber athletic and a great performer. I've yet to see. Uh, we'll we'll talk about this right now. And he, and he told me he's like 6'3". Right. Okay. So he wrestles Cage and two big guys. Right. right. Um, I would pref- tell somebody, go watch. Like, this is a similar type match. Jumbo Sharuda versus Dr. Death Steve Williams. Mm-hmm. Okay. Would be a similar matchup of size and everything with, with the type of competitors, a Japanese guy versus an American, all Japan style match. Look at the physicality, the 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 you know, these guys are bring they're hitting each other hard and everything. Bro, this match was all no selling and thigh slapping. Like these guys thigh slap like it's nobody's business. Like everybody they, and, and they're doing this thigh slap where they're just like they're openly doing it and stuff, and you know, and it's like and if Cage got beat again, Cage came to the ring with a belt. What what belt is that? But I was wondering. Do you know what belt he has, Probably Joe? Probably a ring of honor nah. belt. Oh, uh, is he? Try to find out what belt that yeah. is. Because it was, I was like, this guy has one won a match like on the show. like a ring of honor like, belt. Like a ring of honor six-man maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's one-third of the ring of honor six-man tag champions with the embassy or whatever. Yeah, I was like, let's give the guy something because everybody <laughs> likes him and we're not doing anything with him. But, yet he always goes on the show and he loses. See? Uh, That's all he does is lose. Good lose. match, loses. Good match, loses. Right. You're diluting the guy, bro. He means I, didn't, I didn't think this was a good match. I thought there was too much thigh slap. This wasn't, but these guys should be like super physical with each other. And they were like thigh slapping and doing the no selling. And it's just, I don't know. Just like all these matches look the same. Everybody does the Japanese form spot and everybody's slapping their thighs. And it's just like, and bro, the, the numbers are underwhelming on this show. And I think the work collectively has a lot to do with it. Cause this style here is like, everybody's doing the same spots in every match. 
But would you agree? I mean, do these matches kind of look like you see the same spots over and over, Conan? Yep. Yeah. Yep. The same match, different guys. Right. Um. Um. But and okay. here's the other thing. Did I don't know if you noticed this? Did you notice that now since it's 2023, the rankings have changed? They started yeah, change again, right? Oh, yeah. the records go back to zero. <laughs> right. That's right, bro. What is the purpose of this? I don't know. All right. They they've know. done nothing. They're, to, to, they're literally trying they've to done be- nothing to implement it into the you know storyline of the show. So well, why have it? Well, and let's think about this: is WWE is coming off their you know they're, they're they're on a great run right now that they haven't had in years, right? And they're they're combat their their way to like you know combat what WWE is doing is go is go forward with, with Takshita versus MJF. Yeah. Well, not just that, bro. Like you don't got to do anything to get a match. You just got to bump into somebody and challenge him to go around rampage. Right. I'll give you an example. You and me are backstage, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, I drove Orange Cassidy here, and now he's in. You, you're he's driving back with you. I'll see you at rampage. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Will you accept? I will. I will always accept that match. Okay. Um, <laughs> match okay. made. So, uh, so next is um, they go do a back. Okay, okay. So this is weird. I'm surprised Jericho agreed to this. So the inner circle members, Jericho, Guevara, Garcia, and Parker, and Matt Menard were interviewed backstage. And Jericho said Ricky Starks didn't lose last week's tag team match because of a baseball bat. Jericho started, said Starks wants another match with him. Guevara said he and Garcia put their heads together and came with the Garcia and Guevara gauntlet. Garcia explained that Starks has to beat Parker, Menard, and then either him or Guevara, and then we'd get another match with Jericho. So it's like... There's like every angle, like with these top guys, you got to beat all these guys. This to is what I don't like. like this is what I don't like about this angle. This angle. Doing, right? Go ahead. Right. That's what I don't like about this angle. MJF did this to Chris Jericho not too long ago. Remember right. when he brought in Hoover right. Tude and all these other people? And now at the same time, MJF is doing the same thing Jericho's doing. I yeah. mean, are you guys not comparing notes and going, hey, <laughs> you know, it, it makes it it's seem the like same it. angle. It seems like they, they're not comparing the notes. They I'm have like, to be. Is, you don't, I don't think very, one of them has seen the show and gone, hey, that's the same thing I'm doing? <laughs> it's very weird. I mean, wrestlers Next. are the biggest marks. All they do is run home and watch their match. We used to do it. Right. Next is Omega, Matt Jackson, uh, Callis, and Michael Nakazawa were there, and they're at a basketball court. And they said Top Flight could bring their buddy. They're challenging Top Flight and AR Fox to a six-man for the belts. Omega said they could take their shot, but he had to leap, never miss, and Nick turned around and shot a basket. He got good for one, by the way. I bet you bet, yeah. I bet you the – I've, I've tweeted like the Jacksons are big basketball fans, so I, I, yeah, I they see, are. Yeah, you know, I can see them watching. I can see them being pretty good basketball players. Um, you know, Bro, in, their dress, uh, in their dressing room, they had one of those little, you know, plastic. Oh yeah, I'd be in there all day playing play basketball. Yeah, yeah. I'd be playing horse all day in there if they had one of yeah. those things. Do you want to um, uh, bring Billy on or, or continue? No, just we're almost done. Tell him five more minutes. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, okay. at, he's at three o'clock. You can hear us. You can hear us. I just we're almost done. Um. So then, uh, they challenged him, and Cassidy k- kissed kissed Kenny Omega on the on the cheek or something. Like that, and whatever, I don't know. I thought it was uh, funny, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so then they do Brian Danielson against Timothy Thatcher to the match where everybody and their mother knew knew was going to happen. So Danielson beats him. I don't even really think there's much to talk about here. This is just a bring bringing a guy to fight Brian Danielson. And Danielson beats him. Anything else? Right. I actually yeah. watch this match because I like Timothy Thatcher's style. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I saw him in MLW and in the Indies in California, and I, I like that style. You know, he, he he just had on trunks, Timothy Thatcher, and he just looked like an old-school wrestler from the 70s that we grew up with. You know what I'm saying? And he kind of right. wrestled like that. So I really liked it because it was different than anybody else on the show, you know? It right. was slower pace, no high-flying, very logical manipulation of the of the joints and limbs and physical, and I thought it was a good match. All right, so here's our production glitch. You ready? Yeah. So uh, the cameras cut back. Bro, stage you didn't go over. Didn't Jade Cardgill fight? No, it's next. Red, so we oh, got to do this next. first. Okay, but, but here's our production glitch. So the cameras cut to the back where MJF threw a chair at Takshida, and MJF picked up a trash bucket and threw it at him. MJF, oh, because uh, Takshida, MJF tried to come down in the Thatcher match, and Takshida fought, showed up and fought him off, right? Right. So then they go backstage, and they're fighting, and they traded punches until Pat Buck arrived with a group of people and pulled them apart. Then Ramey Paquette showed up in between the, them and said, Tony Khan just announced that MJF will fake Tashida in an eliminator match on Dynamite next week, right? Yeah. Um, so then – so okay. So so MJF had had a short sleeve black shirt on, big pull apart. You know, he just had phys- physicality and everything, right? So we go to commercial. We come back, and the announcer says – what's his name? Excalibur says, let's go to Renee Paquette with MJF. 
we go backstage and it's Lexi Nair is interviewing Roosh with Preston Vance and the Jose guy. Then MJF walks in wearing completely different clothes. Like, like he's, you know, like, like he's changed and everything <laughs> completely different clothes and has a briefcase in his hands. And basically he offers him money to take out Brian Danielson. The same thing, bro. They put this interview in the wrong spot and the announcers cut to it. And it wasn't even the right interview that they were supposed to, like, this was a complete production glitch. Wow. You know, so it's like I'm surprised not a lot of people notice this. I didn't. But Excal- Excalibur literally said, "Let's go to Renee Paquette and MJF," and they go to and this. It's a completely different group, and then then, then MJF walks in. It's like I, I don't <laughs> I don't know this that absolute production glitch. So then Jay Cargo wrestles Red Velvet and uh, beats her, um, you know, whatever. And then he then she mm. pulled her daughter out of the front row and carried her to the back. And that's what. What do you think it is? I'm. I don't know. She needs to be in like a feud. You know what I'm saying? She's just running over everybody. She should have beaten this girl quicker. Um, I thought it was. I don't know if you saw this, but did you see when they went to a commercial? She actually picked her up uh, outside the ring, press slammed her over her head, and walked up the stairs and threw her in the ring and like hot shotted her on the top rope. That was really cool and showed her strength and core strength. Right. But I'm just. She needs to be like in a feud. You know what I'm saying? Right. She, she's become redundant. So next is the main event, Samoa Joe versus Darby Allen. Bro, Darby Allen is an, is an attraction because, yes. bro, his matches look real. Yeah, he's, he's great. He's really diving. Every, he's really taking the bumps. He's, he's really, a guy who hasn't who – ha, he's, he, he's maybe the only guy besides maybe Orange Cassidy who hasn't had to use promos to get over. Right. I mean, I, I, I look forward to his matches, bro. Yeah, he's, I do too because yeah. he's like – it's like real. Right. It's like he's, you know, he's bringing, yeah. bro, when he's chopping Joey, he was slapping him in the face hard. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, so it's like, I'm like watching this. Yeah. I'm like, this and he's is taking a good crazy night. bumps. He and, sells good. And, and at Joe, the end, when he got beat, he's laid there dead like you're supposed right. to. And then Wardlow comes out dressed in a suit and runs to the ring and tackled Joe. But then he gets out and then Joe got away and there was really no heat there. So it's like. Remember when he, they used to be Ward Joe? Nothing. Yeah. And then they, then they threw, he threw security guards and they went off. He looks like he's ready to power bomb or like. Border toss a guy outside the ring and they cut away and that was the end of the show. So I was like, No, they did show him. He border tossed him onto the other guys. Oh, he Mm. did. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that was. So that was a. Any comment on this? Yeah, I thought it was a good match. Yeah, it was good. This was. This is a really good match. Yeah. And I liked. uh, You know, I'm big Darby Allen fan even before you got him because at the beginning you're like, who the is this guy? And I was telling you, this guy's different, dude. Right. And um, I'm happy for him because he's actually a very cool kid. You know, and he listens. He is one guy that you tell him he listens just like Luchasaurus, like Mm -hmm. they'll listen. And I think Brian Cage must be listening because he wasn't doing as much as he usually does in the flip flop side. Yeah, but he's still thigh slapping egregiously, which is, I don't think looks good. Yeah, you know, you need to knock that off, BC. But, um, yeah, not a, yeah, yeah, that's been our, yeah, not a bad show. Um, you know, we just told you what we like and what we didn't like, and that's been our, our, uh, AEW review. Enjoy the rest of the show. Boom.